Welcome everybody to another Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to make a cool maze like this. And you can also uh, move around. And it's going to be all made out of pen. It's really cool and nice. Sometimes there are these black lines in the front, but uh, we may be fixing that uh, another time. Also, one more cool feature. You can increase the quality to have a better line system. You can go from only 20 lines to 75 lines. It may make it a bit laggier for you. But yeah, you have a quality system. And this is the code that we will be making today. I hope you are excited. So let's get started. So first I'm going to make a new project. So yeah, we've got this now. Now, I'm going to delete costume two because we don't need it and basically get rid of the cat. It's still keeping the sprite though. Now I'm gonna make an error. I not an error. What do I mean by error? An arrow. Sorry about that little flaw. Okay. So I'm gonna copy and paste that. Okay, there are two arrow pieces. And I'm going to go and make an arrow. Now I'm going to go and make it a bit larger. Like that. And now I'm going to center our arrow. So this piece is a bit off. I think that'll do for now. So I'm going to rename our arrow character player. Now I'm going to paint another sprite and I'm just going to make the maze in this one. For this, I'm going to make a large rectangle. And now I'm going to go and make lines. Also, you can make perfectly straight lines by pressing shift. Also, if you ever want to make a perfect square, you can use shift for that too. Also for making a perfect circle. But anyways, I'm just going to start designing the simple maze. Now, for some reason, at least for me, 3D makes it harder. So, it can be something really basic. It doesn't really even matter. 
so now I'm just gonna make this. I think that'll do. Now I'm gonna go and select this and take it up here. Actually, no, 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 I don't like using this method. I'm just sorry, I'm gonna recenter it. Now, there's barely going to be any code in this. When the green flag is clicked, we're just simply going to go to a position in the top right corner of the screen. So let's try 200. That's a bit too far. 180. Okay, sure. So 180. For why I'm gonna try 120. Okay, maybe 100. 110. Okay, Y180, X180, and Y110. That's a good position. Now for our player. Let's see how that position works. So I'm going to go to X180, Y110. As you can see, it's inside a line. I don't really know what to do, except to keep on editing the position. However, it looks like it's barely going to be able to get anywhere because it's going to take up so much space. So I'm going to set the size to maybe 50%. Maybe that was a bit too small. How about 75? I guess I could work with that. Now I'm going to edit the position. Also. I sort of want it to point to a far away wall. So I'm going to point in direction uh that would be 135. Now I'm gonna change this to maybe like Y120. And I'm going to change this to 200, maybe. Okay, 195. 115 for Y. X, 210. Sorry about this editing. It may take a little bit of time. Okay, I think that's good. Now that we've got this, I want to start with the code. Yeah, so. I'm going to drag out a forever loop. I'm going to drag an if statement now. So, if, sorry, if key right arrow is pressed, then I want it to turn right, how about five degrees? I'm going to duplicate it. Key left arrow is pressed, then I want to turn left five degrees finally duplicate it get rid of this and instead i'm going to move one step and this will be if key up arrow is pressed now as you can see we have a system where we can control our character however there's basically no wall system
Okay. It's a nice little system to control your character. But enough playing. I want to actually start coding this. So what we want to do is make, um, first, I'm going to delete the my variable variable and make a variable named quality. Now you can double click and you can change it to a slider. I want to change the slider range. I want the minimum value to be 20 and the maximum value to be about a step up from last time. I'm going to keep it at 100. Now, as you can see, our slider goes between 20 and 100, which is perfect. Anyways, I'm going to go and make a block now. I'm going to name this clone, and I'm going to click the run without screen refresh option. I'm going to go and clone right over here. So here's how clone works. <clears throat> so... Um... I'm going to turn right 60 degrees. Um, when, mul when this number is multiplied by two, um, I'm actually going to do 70. So this, so this number multiplied by two will be of our full perspective of what we can see of the maze. Now I want to repeat the quality. I am going to create a clone of myself. And also <clears throat> Um, turn right 70 degrees at the end, too. Now, turn left. The number that you put in the turn degrees, which is 70, and multiply that number by 2. So, divide. So, 140 divided by. And you want to divide it by the number in the repeat block. So divided by quality. And this is how you will make clones. As you can see right now, it may just look like it's a big blobby mess. <laughs> Seriously. But trust me, it's going to help. <clears throat> <coughs> Anyways, we want a way to identify clones. So make a new variable, clone count. And make sure that you select the option for the sprite only. Otherwise, things could go horribly wrong. Click OK. And now we've got that. At the beginning of clone, set clone count to zero. And for each clone, change clone count by one. Now each clone has its own number in clone count. We still got a big fat sphere mess, which, yeah, so. Yeah. So I want all of our clones to go out and see the distance to the wall. So
So, when I start as a clone, repeat until touching Sprite 1. You know what? I'm going to rename Sprite 1 Maze. I don't really think Sprite 1 fits it. So, repeat until touching Maze. I'm going to move one step. And as you can see, we have detection for what the player can see. Which is exactly what we want. Now that we have, um, I believe 20 clones or something, uh, we can start. So... Okay, so now we want a way to define the distance between other things. So make a list. And I'm going to name it distance to wall, something like that, which will actually detect the distance to the player, but it's mainly for detecting the distance to the wall. Okay, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to go and make a new block. Reset less. I'm going to do run with that screen leaf. And the first thing that I do will be resetting the list. In reset list, I'm going to delete everything from distance to wall. And I'm going to repeat quality. I'm going to add zero to distance to wall. Now, as you can see, right now we have 20, and it keeps on increasing and decreasing by the number of the quality. Anyways, now we want to figure out the distance, so I'm going to replace item clone count of distance to wall with the distance to the original sprite. However, you may notice that if we just drag out a distance to block, we can't actually select the player. So here's what we are going to do. There's actually a sneaky little trick to get past this. Grab a distance to block and do player in the maze. And now drag that out to player. Now if we go up to the one green block clicked, we have our distance to player block. And if it's inside of a clone, then it detects it for the original sprite. So I have used this trick in my previous part two of making a platformer tutorial where we covered on coins, we were detecting if the player was touching a coin. But anyways, <clears throat> uh, let's test it out. Hmm.
You know what? I'm actually going to reset list only at the beginning of our code. Now, as you can see, we have the distance for all of our stuff. And you may notice that there are a bit of unneeded decimals. So what I'm going to do is actually round the distance to player. And there we go. We've rounded them all. So, <clears throat> yeah, now we know the distances. So, now that we have our distances, we want to make this happen really fast. Because, uh, as of now, we're basically waiting until they touch. So I'm going to hide these variables. So wait, I want to show quality. And I'm going to make a new block. Detect distance. And I'm going to make sure it's run without screen refresh. And I'm going to go and put all of this over here and detect distance when I start as a clone. And if I show distance to wall, not only does it happen immediately, well, it's happening immediately. Um, Aha. Uh -huh. Silly mistake. Go to this position in every loop. Hmm. Hold on a second. Uh, I think we have a bug. Hang on a sec. Okay, I figured out my error. You actually do not need this to go over here. <clears throat> you can put it back. Problem is, I forgot to delete this clone after because we're always creating a new clone. As you can see, now you can no longer see a gigantic sphere, which is nice. And we also, um, we do not have our list items. Just, there we go. And as you can see, we have our list items. 
in. Oh, that was my problem. It's just that it's just no high school mom, no thing. Okay. And if you're touching a wall, they should all be nuts nothing. Anyways, now that we've got our system working, we can get to the rendering. So, uh, So, I'm, for this, I'm going to go and make a new block named Render. And I'm going to do Run With That Screen Refresh. Also, put Render over here. And this will be all made out of pen. So if you look in the bottom left corner of your scratch project, you should see an option of two blocks connecting with a plus sign next to them. Click that and you have all of these other options. Click the pen one. <clears throat> and as you can see, you now have the pen extension. And this is what this maze will be created of, as I have said earlier. <clears throat> so, Get a go to x y block and then a repeat block and and the reason why i'm just going by this really quickly is because i want to put this go to x y block back at the end and 202 and 115 115 and if you don't do this you will literally crash scratch so, <clears throat> anyways, you want to repeat quality. <clears throat> and go to X minus 240, which is the bottom of the screen. And Y. Like, um. The bottom of the screen, I guess, minus 180. So, what I want to do is grab a pen down and then a pen up. And I also want to grab out a change X and a change Y by. Also, Make sure you erase everything before you re-render. Otherwise, it could get really big or blurry. Now, this should be what you have so far. It looks nothing like a maze, as you may know, because we're not even getting any settings by the change X and change Y. Before I get through that, um... You want to make a new variable named count, and I'm going to click OK. So now we have our count variable. In the beginning, set count to zero, and now over here, change count by one. Okay. Also, set the pen size to 
480, which is the length of the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, divided by quality. So that makes a pen size. And as you can see, the larger quality, um, yeah, we're still a work in progress. So instead of changing X by 10, um, want to change X by this too. And also turn these around and instead of one change Y, drag in two change Y's. Now you should have this. So, Um, also, you want to make sure that you pen up before you even start drawing. So, um, Okay, hold on a second. Take the pen up and put it over here. Take the pen down and put it over here. And now put it back. Uh, okay. So... <clears throat> So I'm going to drag a multiply by 7 out, and I'm going to do a 20 minus over here, and I'm going to do item count distance to wall. I'm going to... it over there. Now you should have something related to this or something. And I'm also going to drag one over here and instead of times 7, do minus times minus 14. As you can see, you have this sort of system thing. However, it's sort of towards the bottom. However, you may notice a problem that you can't go forward. And I know our maze isn't quite looking, you know, the best, but you can't move forward because we're going back to our original state every time. So here's what we do. Make two more variables, old x and old y. Now over here, grab two sets. Set old x to x position and set old y to y position. And instead of going to these coordinates, go to old x and old y. Now we can move forward and turn to Yeah, we can also turn pretty affectingly which is um uh Old two. Um, also, I may have messed up with these pen patterns. I'm going to go and turn these around. Mm.
I'm going to change this y value to 0. No, that is not what I want it to do. Minus 180. Um. Oh, yes. I forgot. Over here, set y to 0. And put the pen down after this. Okay, now it's centered. Uh, however, sometimes you may notice that there's some curve at the top. That's because we want to take the pen up and put it over here. Now we're basically done with our maze system. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, it's a big, it's a bit buggy, but we may be able to work that out next time. So, um, now this May system is cool and all, but, um, I think I just accidentally crashed the screen. Oh, no. Okay. So our fun so what we want to do is we also want to set the pen brightness because the only way we can depict how far a wall is is by its height, which isn't exactly what I want. So Over here, I'm going to set the pen brightness to the same thing as this. And now we have some nice brightness with us. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we can go through walls, which is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is take this out. And grab anything else. And I'm going to put this in the else. I'm going to take these out and put them there. And I'm going to put these in the if. I'm actually going to go and put these over here. Over here, I'm going to go to old X and old Y. And this will be if our character is touching the maze. Also, we don't have a system where our character can move backwards yet. I'm just going to do if key down arrow. If key down arrow pressed, then move minus one step. And I'm going to duplicate it and put that there. Let's try it now. Mm. Mm. Can no longer move left and right for some reason. Only backwards. Oh, we can move forward. 
you stop over there. Okay, so touching the maze is going a bit too far, I think. What about if... the distance to the maze equals zero. Oh wait, that won't work because the maze is one solid thing. Um, uh, actually, you know what? How about this? Uh, take this back and take this. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Ha Sorry about that, but how about if touching. If we're touching the maze, then I'm going to move minus one step. And I'm going to put this inside the if key up arrow. Now let's try it. There we go. Now we can move forward and we have some nice collision. Now we have a good May system. And we can also change the quality. As you can see, it's uh, a bit buggy, um, but you can tell that it has bigger quality. Um, yeah, there are these black lines in the front for some reason, but we can fix that next time. Also, the higher the quality can cause more lag. But anyways, uh, yeah. Also, one thing that I've noticed is that when you click the right arrow, you're moving left, and you, when you click the left arrow, you're moving right. Which is a problem. So all that we need to do is switch these. So, yeah. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, then make sure to leave a like. That would be much appreciated, and it would also be appreciated if you would subscribe and also leave a comment on this video. Thank you for watching.